Hey everybody and welcome to the Franklin Foundations. My name is Katie Mae Franklin. If you are new and I'm so glad that you have found your way here today. Today's video was actually inspired by a request that I got over on my Facebook page, the Franklin Foundations, like forever ago whenever I posted for video suggestions and what the topic was, was about tips for mental health dealing with anxiety and depression. So today's video, I will not really be going digging deep into the Bible and sharing scripture with you guys, but I will be sharing 10 practical tips that you can do like immediately whenever you feel yourself going down that rabbit hole of anxiety and depression that are sure to help in one way or another lead you to the other side. But just keep listening if you think this will be beneficial for you. And let's go ahead and get into today's video. So some of these tips you guys may find a little comical, but I swear by it, I promise by it, they do work. These are tips that I have to take myself. Y'all, I'm talking to myself. I've told you in my testimonial video, I have struggled with anxiety and depression time and time again. It's like a thing that I continue to have to battle with and conquer, but thankfully God gives us the skills to do it. We just have to grab a hold of them, receive it, and claim his victory. Can I get an amen? Amen. So tip number one, is the one thing you all should know, it should be very obvious, is prayer. Prayer is so, so, so essential. If you do not take your cares, take your burdens to the Lord, then they just stay with you and you carry them. And eventually that burden is going to become so heavy that you are just gonna have a flat out breakdown, meltdown, just the whole big scene, and it is not going to be pretty. It's gonna be a lot easier to manage if you just go to God, go get somewhere quiet, kneel down on your hands and knees, and just tell God all about it, because He wants to hear. He knows, but He wants to hear from you. It literally says in the Bible, cast your cares on Him, for He cares for you. Tip number two is to rest. And when I say rest, I mean rest in your body and allow rest in your mind. Because if you do not get that physical and mental rest, you will be walking around just so exhausted and so stressed out. And any little thing that gets thrown your way, like somebody calling you on the phone, you're gonna be flipping out and freaking out like, oh my gosh, what is this about? Uh, I don't wanna answer it. Like you're gonna be just so overwhelmed that you just can't even breathe, you can't even function properly. So you guys, it is so important when you're dealing with those kinds of issues to stop. Take a nap, make sure you're getting the sleep that you need to and just take time and go sit and be quiet. If you're a mom, ask your husband once a week to just take the kids, go somewhere or just go lock yourself in the bedroom and just sit there for a couple hours and just decompress. I promise you that physical and mental rest will do you so much good. Tip number three for caring for your mental health. Health, did I say that? I've been saying help. I refilmed this like three times. For your mental health <laughs> is to do a perspective check. Just stop everything you're doing and ask yourself these questions. Is it really that bad? Could it be worse? <laughs> the first question you may want to say, oh yeah, it is that bad. <laughs> and the second question I can most mostly guarantee you will always be yes as well. It could be worse. So when you do a perspective check, I just challenge you to stop and look at the good things. Your beautiful little children, your wonderful husband, your home, your car, your job, whatever it may be, your church, God Almighty. Just do a perspective check and look at the good things and focus on them. And I promise that will do wonders in helping depression and anxiety because you can't help but get happy and have joy whenever you look at the good things that are in your life. 
Tip number four is to be in God's Word daily. It is literally called the daily bread, okay? So you need to be there daily because I promise you, if you start your morning, I believe morning time, there's just something really special about giving that time to your Lord. Those are your Genesis moments, the beginning moments of your day. And if you give that to God, He will just bless you abundantly throughout the day. When you read His Word, He will meet you there with encouragement that you didn't even know you needed to get through the day. He said He would supply your every need. And if you're not in His Word, how do you know? How do you know what he says? How do you know how to conquer the day? You don't. You need to be in God's word. It is so vitally important. Tip number five is to examine what is feeding you. And whenever I say this, I do not mean food. I do not mean go and check your refrigerator. What I mean is media. What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you reading? If you're having tro problems with stress and anxiety and depression, are you sitting around watching um, really intense anxiety provoking films? Are you sitting around watching sad films? Are you listening to sad music or just this heavy music that you just cannot handle? Because you guys, I promise, there's spirits in that stuff and you need to be careful. I personally, I've testified about this before and I'll tell you again, I cannot do horror movies. Never have been able to do horror movies since I was a little old thing. My anxiety, it makes my heart rate shoot up and it just scares the crap out of me. It's not even the fact of watching it, it's just my body, I know I can't handle it. Just know if it's in my house, I, I can't. That's why we don't watch them in my house. Because it's just a lot more peaceful if we don't. I do believe there are spirits on that thing. Satan is at work in them. And you can allow things to come into your house through those things. Including books. Including music. You have to be very, very careful with what you allow yourself and your children to consume. I'm dead serious, you guys. That's not a joke at all. Really examine what you are feeding yourself. Because I about guarantee you... Part of your problem probably lies right there. Tip number six is to do a heart check, okay? You need to just stop and examine your heart. Is there anything that you could potentially be holding on to? For an example, is there bitterness? Is there hatred? Is there envy? or any other number of things, just stop and think, am I harboring a grudge or of some other sort against somebody? If you are, that could be causing you a whole host of problems. I can attest to that as well. But I can promise you one thing, if you stop and you connect with God, you pray and you lead your heart back to Jesus and you, with the intention of act, acting on it, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? And you do what Jesus would do. You guys will be amazed at how quickly those chains will break, how quickly that bondage will be gone, how quickly that weight will be lifted off of your shoulders. It's not easy. I know that. Everybody knows that. But is it worth it? Oh my goodness, yes. For the freedom and the peace that you feel, it is so worth it. Give up your pride. Humble yourself. I don't care if you didn't even do anything wrong. Forgiving someone and moving on is worth your peace and freedom even if you didn't do anything just go on let Jesus deal with it let it go and watch the weight be lifted tip number seven is to build a healthier lifestyle you guys would be amazed I have seen it myself I'm gonna be honest with y'all I'm kind of slacking right now I'm, I'm majorly slacking right now but you would be amazed at what a regular exercise routine and a just a few tweaks of a healthier diet does to your overall mood and your overall just composure. I mean, it's it's seriously life-changing. It's hard though to put down them Doritos, okay, and get up in the morning and exercise when you just feel like crud. I, I mean, that's where I'm at right now. I'm trying to convince myself I need to do it. So, you know, I'm not preaching to the choir. I'm not misfit. <laughs> Never claimed to be. But in the past, I have really put forth that effort. And you guys, the change was amazing. I felt like a million bucks. I'm gonna be honest. 
but coming from a side of I'm just I'm gonna call it out I'm just kind of lazy right now and I just it's hard to resist the temptation that are snacks okay that's where I am so I'm just gonna say even if that is you don't be discouraged by this tip please do not you are beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of Christ you do you boo boo but I'm just saying do not dismiss the pros, the benefits to a healthier lifestyle, okay? Just, that's all I'm saying. I'm preaching to myself right now. If nobody else wants to take that, I'll take that, okay? Got it, Katie? Got it. All right, praise God. Tip number eight <laughs> is do not stress out over things that are not under your control, okay? I'm going to take us back to the Bible. We're going to learn a little lesson from our sister Eve. You know the book of Genesis, you know the downfall, you know all the things that happened. Eve did not like not being in control and knowing everything. So what did she do? She went ahead and went and ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, even though God told her not to. She was like, I need to have control, I, I need to know. So I'm going to go eat of it. So she did. But you guys, that was never God's intention for us to carry that weight. That's why he told Eve, don't do it, sister. You don't need that in your life. So make better choices than our sister Eve. Trust God, for when we are not in control, he is always in control. Tip number nine is to go outside. There is nothing worse than just sitting in your house all day, especially if you are a stay-at-home mom. And if you're down in the dumps and just a ball of stress, there is nothing worse that you could do than just sit in your house all day with all the reminders of everything you need to do and all your obligations just staring you in the face. That's like the worst thing you could do. A good thing to do would be to just step outside. Take your kids, go outside, go for a little walk. Even if it's cold outside, bundle up. I love me. I'm ready for fall, y'all. I'm ready for fall. By the time this video goes up, it may be fall. I don't know. But right now, I mean, it's 90 degrees outside and I'm sitting here long sleep. Y'all, <laughs> I'm ready for fall. But anyways, seriously, go outside. Look at God's beautiful creation. That'll show, that'll allow you to be just a little bit thankful to just look at his majesty and just, wow, be in amazement of him. And it just does, y'all, it just does a little good to just walk away sometimes Take a breather, get some fresh air. It's good for the heart, it's good for the mind, it's good for the soul. Just seriously, just try to get outside. At least once a day, it'll do you so much good. Tip number 10 is to have a good cry. Yes, I'm so dead serious. <laughs> Sometimes that is the best medicine you could possibly have do is to just have a good cry just let it all out go to God if you have a confidant somebody that you can go and talk to and you know that you can trust them go to them if you don't go to Jesus let me tell you I've got ugly before Jesus more times than I could count and it always does me a bit of good <laughs> but seriously just go to someone let it all out just let it all out cry get ugly girl it is oh okay because guess what you letting that out letting it be said letting it be heard whether it be by a friend or the good lord himself because i'm gonna tell you he gonna hear it anyway even if you don't speak it but just voicing that and saying it whatever it may be your feelings will release the pressure because i can promise you one thing if you never cry or you never let out what you're feeling it'll just sit and it'll just fester and it'll just grow. Putting on a pretty face does nothing because eventually that pretty face is gonna be ruined by a full on meltdown. I'm just telling you the truth because eventually what you're gonna do is gonna be like a pressure cooker and it's just gonna keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter to the point you can't control it and you just lose it. You're walking out of church on Sunday morning and your kids have been wild and you just lose it in the parking lot. Been there, done that. I'm just gonna be honest. Just do it at home in the privacy or in the <laughs> fellowship of a good sister and just let it all out then so you don't have to like have a mental breakdown in public. I'm just telling you, a good cry does a lot of good, for real. 
But that is all for this video today, you guys. I was serious when I said some of those may make you laugh. You may not want to take some of them, but this was requested of me and I just had to sit down and think, if I'm down in the dumps and just really having a hard time, what do I do? And that's what I wrote down. That's what I came up with. And it's all tried and true facts. It's all stuff that I've done before. And I just wanted to share that with you. Some of those tips are probably not things you've heard before. Some of them may be things you have to do every single day. Because let's be real, life is just a routine of connecting with Jesus. Saying, Lord, help me. Help me get through the day. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt and the hat. I mean, come on. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope that it helped you. I hope that those were practical tips that you can take and use in your own life. I mean, why else would I make this video unless it's useful for you? I mean, really, I'm just here to encourage and uplift you from one sister to another. I hope y'all have a great weekend. Be blessed and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.